If realistic career modes were a stock, I would put money in them because they're only going up. It seems like everyone only wants to do realistic career modes now. Everyone's bored of signing Mbapp for Grimsby, but people still want a challenge, and that's where realistic career modes come in. In this video, I'll give you five of my biggest tips on how to keep your save realistic and how to have fun while doing so. We're gonna start off with the initial squad. So when you join your team, you're gonna wanna analyze the squad. I know this sounds boring, but I can promise it's not that big of a deal. You're gonna wanna find your best young player who's under 21 years old, and you'll also need to find the average age of your squad, which can be found easily on SoFIFA. You'll only need these as guidelines to make sure you're keeping on track, but you'll also need to figure out a formation and see where you need improvement if you wanna play that style. You should compare your squad to existing squad rules for the league, but don't worry if you can't find the squad rules for leagues, I put them in most of my league guides that I make on this channel. So that's the first step and I promise they get more interesting from now on. You'll know what your squad's like, you'll know where you need to improve, and from here you can put the following four steps into action. You're going to want to begin with the youth academy. A lot of people think this is the most fun part of FIFA is developing your young players, but I'd advise you don't use academy scouts that are higher than your team's star rating. If you're playing as a 4.5 star team in the Premier League, I wouldn't go for the 5 star 5 star scouts until you manage to make your team naturally a 5 star team. Likewise, if you're playing in League 1 with a 1 star team, I would advise you only go for a 1 or 2 1 star scouts to keep it a bit more realistic. Also, try not to hoard players in your youth academy. There's no point having 5 left wingers because very few youth teams in real life would do this. Just try and keep 1 or 2 players per area on the pitch. So have 1 goalkeeper, 2 defenders, 2 midfielders and 2 forwards for example. Try to only scout countries that your team already has players from. So if your team has a strong core of Irish players and you're in League 1, make sure you're scouting Ireland. Likewise, if you're one of the Scandinavian countries that has a strong American presence, maybe consider sending a scout to the United States. If you're totally confused by this, then just scout neighbouring countries because that's also a fairly realistic way to scout. So outside of the Youth Academy, you're also of course going to want to buy some players. In my opinion, you should only sign a player that you fully scouted because this will stop you being able to panic buy random players that you don't know too much about and not many football teams do that in real life. When signing a player, make sure you don't sign anyone that's more than one or two overall higher than the current best player because in real life this does rarely happen. If you do, make sure it's either an older player returning to his former club or maybe a short loan from the division above. For example, if my starting 11's overall average is 66, the best player I can sign would be about 68 or 69 rated. I would give you a bit more leniency if you're signing someone over 30 years old because players do decline very fast. Once they reach around 33 years old, some players just decline 6 points in one season, so it's a risk that I think you should be willing to take. On the other side of the spectrum when you're selling players, I'd make sure you only reject advances that you think realistically would be rejected. If Manchester United came in for a Luton Town player, 100% of the time they would sell him. But if someone like Hull came in for the same player, I think it would be fair enough that they got rejected. You gotta keep this in mind and make sure you only reject offers that realistically the player wouldn't want to transfer to. Especially if the bid is over market value, in which case I would almost 100% of the time accept because that's likely what the team would do unless it was a very special player or a very particular circumstance. One of the big reasons that an AI will actually come in for your players is that if your player's overall is way over the rest of your team, you'll be getting insane stats with him. To get rid of this, try not to sign players that are massively better than the current existing young players. For example, if you have a 19 year old with 70 overall, don't then sign a 17 year old who's 75 even if this is lower than your best players overall, because of course this player will then get much better than your current players and eventually will make the game unrealistic by getting 40 goals in League One or something. While you're at it, try to only train players who are outside of your first 11. The first 11 get their own training boost already, so if you have both training and match practice in there, your players will both get insane match sharpness and none outside of your first 11 which is bad, but also they'll get double boosted and players can go up by 10-15 overall in one season, which is incredibly unrealistic and rarely happens in real football. If you can keep inside these 5 guidelines, I think you will have a very fun and very challenging career mode. 
A lot of the time, real challenge actually brings out the fun in games. And that's true for FIFA too. Having a challenge makes it a lot more enjoyable. Knowing that if you lose the playoff final, you'll lose your best players and have to rebuild again, I think that's a real good challenge too. It really can put a bit of pressure and a bit of realism into your save, which I think everyone wants these days. But if you have any other tips that you use to keep your career mode safe realistic, then please do let me know because I'm always interested in finding new ways to play FIFA. As I'm sure you probably imagine by now, I do play a lot of FIFA career mode, and I'm also always on the lookout to keep my saves more entertaining and more fun. Let me know how you get on with any saves that you use these rules on, and I hope this video helped you out and was exactly what you were looking for. If you did like the video, then feel free to give it a like, and if you want to see a few more league guides or more FIFA videos about career mode, then feel free to subscribe too. But for now, I'll see you in the next one, and thank you for watching. Cheers. For watching